Bye. Welcome to Cryptocurrency Blockchain News, your daily cryptocurrency blockchain aggregated news show on YouTube. Look, look, there's going to be drinking. Look, look, there's going to be smoking. Look, look, there's going to be swearing. Look, look, you've been warned. So look, look, here we come in three. Look, look, two, look, one. Bye. Welcome, everybody. Black, white, gay, straight, Christian, Muslim, Jew. My name is Shamar Clark. Welcome to Cryptocurrency Blockchain News, the greatest show on earth, the greatest show in the multiverse. Greatest show in the multiverse. Yes, it is. And we have a great show for you today. Bye. All right. Great show for you today. I hope you all had a great weekend. Oh, yes, Miami, man. We got a game on it. We got a game tonight. That's why we're doing this so early. It's 5 o'clock. And look, look. We got to get to drinking and getting ready. Oh, yeah. We got to get to getting fueled. Oh, yeah. All right, all right, all right. Uh, the game, though. I mean, uh, the store, uh, the show. Look. As usual, chain link to the rescue. What? You know, the usual. This is an interesting one. Chainlink onboards Ren. So Ren is going to use Chainlink to secure DeFi. We're going to read about that. And then uh, Google Cloud uh, joins the EOS community. So it's actually Google Cloud is going to do something on EOS. And so let's check it out. And then, all right, the big story of the day. Yes, yes, yes. I haven't even read it, so I don't know what exactly what it all means, but we'll get there when we get there. But the UK is going to ban crypto derivatives trading for retail consumers, uh, retail investors. So uh, that's your swaps, your options, your, your futures. They're not going to allow any of that for uh, UK uh, citizens. And so we will... Read about that. So let's begin how we begin, brothers, with a bang. Yes. yes, indeed, with a little bang. Indeed. All right, what we got here? What are we working with? Let's see what we are working with. Blang, 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 blang. All right, we got Bitcoin, $10,529. <clears throat> look, look. Oh, wait. Let me just situate myself here. Situated. Look. $10,529. And when I left you... Hold on one second, guys. All right. Uh, $10,529. And when I left you on Saturday, we were at... $10,548. We've gone down uh, 19 bucks. All right. Look, top 10 of the day, brothers. You know how it goes, and sisters. You know how it goes. Usual suspects. Top 10. Bitcoin, Ethereum, Tether, uh, XRP, Bitcoin Cash, Binance Coin, Polkadot, Chainlink, Litecoin, and Crypto.com Coin. Let's see what the market moves of the day are. So we're looking at this line right here in the middle. Well, sort of to the left, cantered to the left. Uh, Mark moves of the day, single digits up, single digits down. Man, we've just been slowly bleeding for a while, right? That doesn't it seem like we had that nice push. What was that, about two months ago? Two and a half months, two, two and a half months ago, right? Where everything jumped up really nice. But then it's sort of been like a slow bleed back to those levels, right? Right? Like, I mean, we were at, you know, op like, so VeChain, 0. Point, oh, let me get a sip, 0. 0.00, you know, like 7, 6, 5, around there. It blasted all the way up to almost 2 cents, right? And then it's been a slow bleed, right? Like, we're still above where the blast began. So here we are with VeChain, right? So pretty much just exactly a penny. Um, all right, it's been a slow bleed. All right, so but look, single did up, single did down. I don't know. That's how the market feels to me. Just a slow bleed. Oh, Lee, look at urine, all the way down to sixteen G. Oh, Lee, if you were a fuck stick and you bought that way back up there. Yay. Yay. Oh, Lee. 
And I mean, with that kind of money, there's no shame in being a weak hand. <laughs> you know, if you bought it at 30, there's no shame selling at 20. Fuck that. Fuck that. That's too much. That's too much. <laughs> Depending on how much money you have, you know, obviously. All right, guys. All right. Enough of my yap yap. Look, look. Single digits up, single digits down. All right. Let's see who lost money today. You see anything on here you like? Go get it because it is on sale. I'm in a good mood today, man. Bye. What do we got? Look, look. Puma pay. Yeesh. Wait, what is that? It went down 85. Well, why is the chart showing it? Look at the chart over here on the right-hand side, guys. Why is it showing it uh, like that? Yo, these charts are so fucked. I don't even look at I mean, I do look at them, but I know that they're a bunch of bullshit. But I just take a peek sometimes. All right, like, look, look, look. Hold on, let me get a sip, daggone. Top 10 loser of the day. Puma Pay, Compound, Elrond, Solana, The Midas Touch Gold, Ocean Protocol, Yearn Finance, Ave, OMG Network, and Uniswap. Those are some severe losses right there. All right, let's see who made money today. Bah. Yeesh, holy, it's like that? Oh, so the whole market was just murdered. All right, then. Top 10 gainers, if you want to call it that. <laughs> Top 10 gainers, EOS, Ethereum Classic, ABBC Coin, Day, uh, USD Coin, Trust USD, Tether, HUSD, Binance USD and Litecoin. Holy, all those USD coin. Look at all these. All right? USD, USD. You know, Tether is a thing. USD, USD. All right? All these wannabe money, or I guess, what are those, stable coins? Well, I guess they're stable. That's why they didn't lose. And the losses started right away after that. All right, well, look. Let's see what the mark cap of the day is. Let's see, we got total mark cap. What? Okay. All right. So total market cap is $333.6 billion. When I left you on Saturday, we're at $337.7 billion. So you've gone down $4.1 billion. Let's see what the volume is. Oh, shit. Look at that volume. That's mega. Which sucks because it's a down day, meaning people came in here to sell, sell, sell. All right. Uh, 128.1 uh, billion dollars is our 24 hour volume in the markets. And when I left you on Saturday, we were only at 84, even 84 billion dollars, even. So we've gone up. Uh, what's that? 4.4. Sorry, sorry, sorry. 44. Fucking 44.1 billion dollars. Yeesh. And on a, on a sellout like today. Yeesh. Look. Why, why did the market sell today? I remember, hold on. I know, because the stock market, the stock market, uh, they got, hold on, hold on. Hold on, one second, guys. Let's just, hold on, one second. Let's just go here for a second. Let's just go to Reuters for one second. Let me just look at some data real quick, real quick, real quick. The market's tanked today. Sour as Trump ends, what? What was it? Oh, yeah, that's what this motherfucker did. Yeah, so if you're an American, yeah, Trump, Trump today, he ended the coronavirus relief negotiations. So, you know, the Democrats, they're for worker bees. So the Democrats are trying to get the worker bees a bunch of money, right? Here in America, you got what's called unemployment insurance. And so how it works here in Florida, you get 275 bucks a week if you're on that, right? But then I think it runs out after a certain amount of time or something. Obviously, I'm not a worker bee, so I don't really know. But, you know, I talk to them, and so I, I try to hear it. But I think it works out after – it runs out after a while. And so – but what the Democrats were doing were they were giving the American workers an extra 600 bucks in that check. So, well, first of all, let's, let's go like this. The Democrats gave the Americans a $1,200 check. Right, just to, that's called a stimulus check. So they got that check. Every American got it, whether you, you know. I think every American just got that. 
as long as you had a regular job, right? I didn't get it, obviously. But um, but then they, for them, the worker bees who had to get off of work, they have this thing, unemployment insurance, and they got like 200 bucks a week, but the Democrats gave them 600 bucks extra. So it was like 800 bucks a week um, that workers were getting, right? Minimum, minimum. And so the Republicans are like, no, you know, Republicans don't like that shit. They don't like giving money to peasants. You know, they don't like that. And so uh, they, they, they denied it. They, 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 Mitch McConnell turned it down. And so Trump and the Democrats have been negotiating to give people money, right? To give them the money to, to survive this thing. And, uh, Trump and the Republicans aren't, they don't want to give money to worker bees. They're saying that the worker bees are making too much money that they're not going to go back to work. And so, well, but they shouldn't go back to work right now. It's dangerous. So, right. And so anyway, that's what happened today. Yeah, that was the biggest. That's right. That was the big market news today. Uh, I'll show you in the charts what I do the Forex part. Yeah. He fucking, he fucking, uh, basically told the worker bees to go fuck themselves, but now still come and vote for me. And you see the, the global central banksters. You, do you see, can you guys see this? Let me make sure you can see. All right. All right. So you see these central banksters up here. Uh, okay. So America, the world is going through a second phase now. Like this is the real flu season, right? Like we all got Corona, not we, I mean, not personally, but just Corona hit us in March last year. No, this year, sorry, this year. And, um, and uh, yeah, that's way outside of flu season. And look at what it, it did. Well, now is real flu season is coming. This is it. I think next month starts real flu season, which is going to make this even worse. And so the central banksters are like, all right, man, fuck, we got to, yeah. You're going to have to print some money and pay some people. Pay your citizens to stay the fuck at home. Let's get real. And so, anyway, that's why the markets today tanked. I want to show you numbers. Let's see the numbers. I didn't. Oh, here we go. Oh, they're showing us in percentages, not the number. Yeah. S&P, can you guys see that above my head? Oh, you can't. It's to the, it's to the, the numbers are over here more. All right. So, but anyways. All right. So, yeah, that's what happened today, guys. So, if you're an American... And you, you're getting the, the, there you go. You're a Trump lover and, and you need your stimulus check to come. Yeah, well, Trump just said, go fuck yourself. Yeah, yeah. All he has to do is sign the bill. All he has to do is say, all right, Nancy, give him their money. Simple as that. He ended, ended the negotiations today. So think wisely when you vote. Vote in your best interest. All right, let's get out of here and let's get back to crypto. So where were we? All right. Bag Ren adopts chain links on chain proof of reserve mechanism to further secure DeFi. But you know how chain link do? You know how chain link be? You know how chain link get down? <laughs> yeah. All right. Let me just get a sip and we'll, you know, we'll do the usual. All right. I mean, for crying out loud, though, isn't it? I mean, chain link. The rampage is, 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 I remember last year I used to have to sort of tell people like, guys, look, I'm not looking for VeChain stories. It's just VeChain's onboarding so many people. You guys know how it works here. I just, onboardings come first, so I just read them. I don't care who onboards what. As long as it makes money, that's what we read about first around here. And so I know people think like I'm shilling. Like, why is he promoting it? I'm not promoting anything. They just keep onboarding stuff, right? <laughs> and so, hmm. That's how it goes. Onboards are first, then regulations in uh, investment vehicles. And so Chainlink has just been on a rampage, just a war path. I mean, I got to bet, I bet you like 75% of this DeFi stuff is using Chainlink for price discovery, isn't it? Doesn't it seem? All right, well, let's check it out. So, the high market demand. 
for wrapped assets in the DeFi world. Oh, I have this new wrapping thing everyone's talking about, huh? All right. So the high market demand for wrapped assets in the DeFi world means that the nodes of RenVM now secure about 900 million bridged and 270 million in cross-chain assets. In a bid to ensure that these wrapped tokens are protected while assets fully collateralize them on their native chain, Ren announced today that it is adopting Chainlink's proof of reserve. Oh, okay. Bang! Proof of reserve. Nice. So we're always reading about Chainlink and their that other product they have. Um, price reference data, right? That's the name of that product. Bang! All right. So here's another thing. Proof of reserve. I didn't know Chainlink had this uh, product right here. Nice. Good. Like I told you, I want them to do more. I mean, still, I still would like them to you know, do some stuff with more traditional companies, not always this DeFi crypto stuff, but I mean, you know, gotta start somewhere. So according to Ren, this proof of reserve would enable smart contracts on the Ethereum blockchain to autonomously verify assets, latest collateralization whenever possible. These cross assets include REN BTC, REN BCH, and REN ZEC on the REN ecosystem. So the proof of reserve mechanism also improves the transparency of the cross chain assets connected to the DeFi ecosystem and their ability to be audited. This statement, I'm not really sure what wrapped is. I'm sure, I mean, I know what wrapped is. I mean, it's a Bitcoin inside an Ethereum or something and they can use it or something, right? Like that like on another network so you're kind of using a token from another network because it's wrapped in the token from that network and you can use it or something right i think that's the impression i'm getting i mean i haven't looked into it really i really don't give a fuck but anyways um blah 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 blah, blah. so the statement means that with the proof of reserve mechanisms d apps and users of ren can now audit ren's asset collateralization in a fully automated and censorship resistant manner without having to read a monthly audit report, otherwise known as manual off-chain verification. Oh, so they'll be able to see it in real time, I guess is what they're saying. You'll be able to see that the assets are truly collateralized in real time instead of, oops, shit, someone's at my door. One second, guys. Bang, where were we here? All right. Blah, blah, blah. All right, so this statement means that the proof of reserve mechanism, DApp users of REN can now audit REN's, oh yeah, yeah, that's right, so they can actually see it instead of off, well, what they call manual off-chain verification. In other words, well, it says it right there, off-chain verification. So anyways, the features, you know, posted on some website or something, PDF you download or something like that. So the features of Chainlink's proof of reserve mechanism doesn't come automatically. Something is done first. All right. Firstly, Chainlink updates the proof of reserve reference contracts with current collateralization. This update is made possible after addresses on the Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, and Zcash blockchains are monitored. In this update is made possible after the addresses are monitored, ensuring that only fresh data with significant deviation in the number of reserves are forwarded on chain. The regular updates featured, featured by Chainlink Oracles protects money market protocols that use REN assets as collateral in the sense that they can view their true collateralization before any borrowing or lending can occur. Okay, so they get to see, I guess that's, I guess that's what they're saying again. They get to see it in real time. So they get to see the true collateralization before borrowing or lending can occur. Concerning the new development, Long, Lung Wang, Lung Wang, CTO and co-founder of Ren said, uh, we're thrilled to make Chainlink's proof of reserve. Oh, Zeus Capital. I thought the, all these I thought all these onboardings were fake, Zeus Capital. Well, here's the CTO and co-founder of Ren saying it. <laughs> Zeus. <laughs> you done fucked up, dog. You done fucked up big time. <laughs> clock, clock. I love it. I love it. I love it. I, I'm going I'm I'm I'm, I'm, I'm to tell you the truth. Well, I'm going to keep fucking with Zeus. Oh, yeah. 
I'm going to mention every time, Dagon. Fucking losers trying to short sell Chainlink. It's all fake. They're all fake. Really? Well, here's the CTO, and he says, we're thrilled to make Chainlink. <laughs> thrilled to make Chainlink's proof of reserve feature available to Ren's ecosystem. Oh, yeah. Providing your users with additional security features that further enhance the reliability of Ren assets as key sources of collateral and payment in the DeFi ecosystem. Bah! Yes. Chainlink hodlers. Good news, good news. So, oh, he even continues. So look, look, Zeus. He continues. Zeus Capital, listen up. He continues. Chainlink's ability. <laughs> look, he says, Chainlink's ability to automate the on-chain auditing process is a highly reliable and trans. Oh, wait, in a highly reliable and transparent manner. Allows users to further trust Ren assets without having to track the reserves on their own manually. So, exactly. So, they're going to, it's an automatic thing. You get to look at the, the data, uh, the collateralizations uh, in real time, and then make your decisions on, uh, what are that, loans and, uh, loans and lending and stuff like that. So, bye! Look! Oh, yeah. Chainlink hodlers. Oh, it goes. Just another one. But what I like about this is that it's a new product, Proof of Reserve. Bang. I never heard about that. We never read about that one before. Right? All the all the all these chain link things we've all been reading is we've always been reading is um uh the um price market what the fuck is the name of the product, right? The price market reference, price market reference product. Right? I didn't even know they had this thing. And so, bah, nice, nice, getting used, getting used. What does that mean? Generating revenue. Around these parts, we invest in, we invest in blockchains that are generating revenue. I mean, I tell you, man, like I said, Sounds like Chainlink's got like 75% of this DeFi thing. If this DeFi thing actually does become something, wow. Dag on, I mean. They're all up in there. All right, so. At least for me, this not only is a an onboarding, Chainlink onboards Ren, but it's a it's a boom. I never knew there was a thing called proof of reserve, and so uh, bang. So that's a new product to look out for, and watch uh, Chainlink uh, how how successful it becomes. All right, let's move on. Bang! Google Cloud joins EOS blockchain community. So, um, uh, uh, uh this one, I mean. Google is joining EOS, motherfucker. So, I go. I, I. The reason I'm reading it is because I guess I'm saying it's a, it's an onboarding for EOS, right? I mean, Google's. Oh yeah, they are. So yeah, you know, it's an onboarding for EOS. That's how I look at it. And that's why we're gonna read it. All right. So, Google Cloud has joined the EOS blockchain community with the intent of becoming a block producer. So they're going to balls deep, going all in. This could require approval of the EOS community. EOS, yeah, what are they going to say now? EOS, which has often been criticized for excessive centralization, has 21 block producers in total. In the company's press release, Google Cloud developer and advocate Alan Day is quoted confirming that his company is starting the process of becoming a block producer. So it's confirmed. They are starting the process. Doesn't mean it's going to end well, but at least they're beginning. And I mean, it's Google, so what? You're going to say no? Yeah, real. 
They're real. Look at all the business that'll bring. As organizations begin to incorporate distributed ledger technology into their infrastructures, we're committed to ensuring that the information on public blockchains are securely stored, reliably available, and can be accessed in meaningful ways. In the same document, Block One CEO Brendan Bloomer purported that EOS is responsible for the majority of public blockchain activity, though he did not specify the criteria through which he reached that conclusion. With the majority of global public blockchain activity, EOS is a powerful solution for anyone looking to leverage the decentralized ecosystem with ease. Yeah, exactly. uh, I'm not sure where you're getting that information from there, buddy. Anyways, Block One has also announced that a former Goldman Sachs executive named R. Martin Chavez, Chavez will be leading the company's advisory board. Block One, the company behind EOS, was originally co-founded by current independent <laughs> presidential candidate Block Pierce. Though the aspiring politician was removed from the company several years ago, throughout his career, Pierce has been embroiled in a number of controversies. All right, whatever. Bang! So there you go, though. Uh, it, they, the G Google Cloud is actually taking the steps. They've begun, what do they say? They said they've begun the process. Uh, where was that? All right. All right. They, they said they've started the process, so it's a real deal. They really want to do it. And uh, yeah, man, I, uh, and I guess EOS community has to vote on it, I guess they said. Uh, <laughs> whatever, man. Are you going to say no? Of course not. So bye, EOS hodlers. Here comes Google Cloud. Great stuff. All right, let's move on. Bye. All right, so this was the big, big, big news of the day. I know. I know, I know, I know, I know. This is a... Uh, well, it, it, it. All right, look. Look, look, look. All right, so let's just read. Breaking. UK bans sale of Bitcoin, Ethereum, and XRP derivatives to retail consumers. So, look, man. They're not letting... They're not letting... Look, first of all, I told you, these derivatives guys, BitMEX and Bittrex and all that, that are giving these guys the futures contracts, those are bullshit. Those are scams. I already told you guys that before. Uh, BitMEX, they, they scam these futures guys. Well, they're not futures guys. They're just retailers, t worker bees, trying to make a buck. And they scam them by... They have to pass, you know, like... Uh, Look, every trade has a, what's called a spread. You got to pay the spread to the broker, and you, and then anything above the spread, that's your money. Yeah, man, BitMEX and them, they make their spread so huge that these guys, they see that they're making money, but then once they cash out, boom, it's way less than they actually get, right? Because they don't read. They don't know. that You got to read about the spread and all. They don't know that shit. They're worker bees. They don't fucking know any better. And so, uh, yeah, man, the derivatives market in crypto, man, it's a scam. It, not a scam. I mean, you can make money. I mean, so I'm not I'm not saying that, but like if you're a whale, if you have like real money, like fuck, you can you can do it. You can pay that spread. You're gonna make the loot, but just it's fucking bullshit. And so, um, I haven't read this yet, so. I'm not exactly sure what this is about, but I, I mean, well, I know what it's about. It's about the derivatives, contracts, probably about options, futures, uh, swaps. Uh, I don't know what yet, but, and I get it. They want to protect soccer mom and dad. Yeah, they want to protect them from that shit, right? Right. I'm a derivatives trader. When you guys see my trades on Forex, yeah, that's called a derivatives. Well, a derivative. Right, each trade is a derivative, right? I'm a derivatives trader, and they don't want soccer mom and dad. You know, to get sort of scammed by these lame ass sorry, not let me let me say this like an adult. You know, by these unregistered, unregulated exchanges, you know, and that are putting burdens on them that if it were a real derivatives contract you wouldn't have to 
put up with that. All right? You see the shit we put up with right here to buy this crypto? We got to cut and paste. We got a KYC. We got to put it in the ledger and did it, did it. Right? Whereas in the stock market, all right, you just open your E-Trade account, press a button in there. You own a thousand Microsoft now, right? That, that's the level. Hold on. That's the level we want this market to get to. Yeah, where soccer mom and dad just press a button in and they buy a B-Chain and they're not. Okay, and so that's to buy it on the spot market. But then in the derivatives market, so that they, if they want to, if they want to, you know, play in options or swaps or whatever, it's like the real ones we have now, right? Like I'm a derivatives trader, but the derivatives I have are real, right? Uh, I, I just pray that I, I pay that little, I pay the little spread and bang, I make all the money, right? That's not what BitMEX and these guys, Bittrex and these guys are doing. And uh, so... <laughs> <clears throat> the UK is protecting their citizens, and I, I agree with it. I agree with it. And so, Shimori, isn't that fucked up for crypto? Well, it's fucked up in a little bit in that it's not going to bring us liquidity, but in other words, it's going to stifle a bit of liquidity because derivatives traders bring liquidity to the market, but um, it doesn't affect price because these are just derivatives yeah so they're buying an a they're buying an asset that derives its price from an underlying asset well when you do that the underlying asset is just the price it does it doesn't when you buy on the spot market in other words you're taking assets off the market when you buy them that creates scarcity derivatives don't create scarcity they just if it goes up your derivative goes up. It goes down. Your derivative goes down. You know, it doesn't, but it doesn't affect the price of the underlying asset. So this isn't going to affect our prices. So, and I guess what I should say is so, yeah, yeah don't worry about that. You know, the UK, when they unleash their funds and all that, that that's going to give us the money we need and stuff like that. But uh, I know. All right. So this is a long, I've been yapping here for a second here, but I want you to get it. Obviously, I mean, what the fuck am I doing the channel for if you're not getting get it? <laughs> and so, and so that's how it is. They're gonna they're gonna ban the derivatives. They want to protect soccer mom and dad. Oh, 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 okay. And so, but also, it's from retail consumers. But the institutions are fine to play. Oh yeah, settle down, brother. Settle down now. Settle down. Oh, wow. the institutions are allowed to come. Just soccer mom and dad. Nope. Which, let's get real, soccer mom and dad, worker bees don't know what a fucking futures contract is. <laughs> right? They don't really know what options are anyway, so it's not like a big hit. But it's a hit. But it's not some big hit. It's Come on. You know, guys like me, market guys, we play in derivatives market. You know, hedge fund guys, they play in derivatives market. Soccer moms and dads don't do that. All right, so let's let's begin reading this story. So the market for crypto derivatives. Example, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and XRP and other cryptocurrencies has taken a severe hit. It's not a severe hit. It's not a severe hit. It's a... Uh... They took a jab, <laughs> a little jab to the face. That's no big deal. The UK Financial Conduct Authority, the FCA, so that's their version of the SEC, has banned its trading for retail customers. So that's it. It has been banned for retail. And that's what, look, look, look. Bye. So if anyone's out there telling you, oh my gosh, the UK, they just banned crypto. Settle down, settle down. First of all, they didn't ban any crypto. They banned derivatives trading for retail customers. So soccer mom and dad can't fuck with, 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 with derivatives. They don't even know what derivatives are anyway. So <laughs> don't worry about it. So look, in the official announcement, the regulator, the regulator declared that the above products are harmful to consumers for five main reasons. Oh, did they? Shit. All right, let's read. Like I told you, I didn't read this yet, so 
Let's hear what these guys say. Firstly, the regulator stated <laughs> that the underlying assets do not have a reliable basis to protect their value. Okay. Second, the FCA believes that abuse, illegal activities, and financial crime are widespread in the secondary crypto market. All right, that's... So in addition, the FAC or the FCA? What the fuck? Yeah, FCA. Okay, okay. Let's see how these crypto sites are. Fucking morons. Can't even write properly. So in addition, the FCA argues that cryptocurrencies are extremely volatile and that end users do not have a sufficient understanding of the underlying assets. Oh, well, not yet, but they'll get it. Finally, the FCA claims that investing in derivatives of cryptocurrencies is harmful is a harmful investment. Wow. If you lose your money, it's harmful. If you make money, it's not bad. <laughs> I'm sure you're not going to feel harmed. So look, the regulatory authority states, these features mean retail consumers might suffer harm from sudden and unexpected losses if they invest in these products, which includes well-known tokens such as Bitcoin, Ether, or Ripple. Specified investments are types of investment which are specified in legislation. Firms that carry out particular types of regulated activity in relation to these those investments must be authorized by the FCA. So, again, this is just sort of what like like, like what the FCA the sec is doing here in america they're protecting soccer mom and dad you know like yes this is a volatile market so yes you may suffer harm and a sudden loss unexpected loss yes yes but it's up to you whether you want to get in the market or not i'm a forex trader right our market is the we used to be the before this crypto thing we used to be the wild west boys stock market boys used to say to us Holy man, because we used to have 401 leverage. They used to say to us, holy dogs, you guys are crazy. You're trading with 401 leverage. Look, look. <laughs> we we're like, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah, that's how it is. And if you lose your shirt, all right, well, that's trading. Uh, that's investing. And in, um, so, you know, they're trying to protect soccer mom and dad. Well, what they view as protecting soccer mom and dad. But, you know, and so they're harping on they could suffer harm from a sudden unexpected losses. Sure. But if soccer mom and dad invested in, look at that, let's get this fucking get over here, man. Watch this shit right here. But if soccer mom and dad invested in, where's this fucking piece of shit right here? Whoops. Hold on. If they invested in yearn in Feb in J in March, when it was at like I don't know what it was, but it was some super stupid small price, well they'd be making money. So you know what I'm saying? They're always they're always saying, well we're protecting them from the losses. Well, you're also stifling their ability to earn money, right? All right, so you know what I'm saying I. And that's what a market is. You, you come in here, it's like anything. You're like a poker table. You come in down, you come in, you put your chips down, and yeah, maybe you lose. Maybe you win. That's markets. And so, all right, man. So, you know, these guys trying to, you know, they're, they're saying they're protecting. Uh, you're, are you really protecting them? Or because you're also stifling them. Right, you're stifling people from being able to make. I mean, look, fuck. I wish I had put fucking ten G's in here and fucking back in February, man. The fuck, man. I'd I'd be out of this. <laughs> I'd be out of the market. All right, that'd be it. Bye. There's my million. All right, and forex gone. Grab sweetie and get the fuck out of here. Like tag on, like you know. So you're stifling people while you're trying to protect them right the so-called protection okay so look all right let's get on uh uk's fca targets bitcoin ethereum and xrp derivatives so the uk's regulator hold on let me get right here. the uk's regulator claims that the ban on crypto derivatives will save uk consumers around 53 million a year will it save them 
or will it lose them? If your people are investing wisely, well, you're stopping them from making money, fuckstick. Right? They're assuming, right? Look, look, look how they word that. <clears throat> That's what I don't like when these, you got to watch these regulators. You got to watch the way they say shit. That this will save the UK consumer around 53 million a year. How will it save it? What if your consumers make money? What if they made 53 million a year, fuck stick? Because they invested wisely. Oh, yeah. Fucker. Right? You're just assuming they're going to lose. Right? They're assuming, yeah, it'll save them 53 million. Why? How? how where are you getting that assumption from? That's because your assumption is that they're all going to lose. Who the fuck says they got to lose? <laughs> Who the fuck says they got to lose? They can win. Right? I'll tell you right now. Like if fuck sticks here in America said, yeah, well, we're not going to allow Forex trading because, oh, we got to protect soccer mom and dad. Well, 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 look, look. Yeah, but I win. So you're going to cut me off from a living. Uh, this isn't happening. I'm just, this is an example, but just a hypothetical. But if America said all of a sudden, yes, we're going to stop all Forex trading because people actually lose. Yeah, some lose. Some lose. Yeah, but the rest of us is how we make a living, fuck stick. The fuck? What the fuck? Right? Uh, and if you, if, you, if you don't know what you're doing, then don't fucking come here. Right? And the for, okay, Forex. Yeah, you don't know what you're doing, then don't come here trading, motherfucker. What are you doing? Right? It, it, you shouldn't have to protect someone from their own stupidity. Right? And, 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 and kill the livelihoods of others of us who aren't stupid and who actually know how to play this game. Right? You're saying because soccer mom and dad are fucking retards, well, you guys can't play that game. What? What? <laughs> what is that? What is that? Nah, dog. Nah, dog. If they don't know how to fucking play, they shouldn't fucking come here. Right? Don't cry. Right? It, I, I don't start a restaurant if I don't know how to cook food. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't come here if you don't know what you're doing. Right? I, I don't know how to fix cars. Yeah, well, I'd never start. I'd never start a, you know, a garage. You know, a mechanic shop. Yeah, I don't know about that. I, I know what a wrench is. I know what a hammer is. Other than that, <laughs> you don't want me under your hood of your car. And I wouldn't be stupid enough to start a business, an enterprise, doing something I don't know how to do. And so if these idiots, cause remember this. I want you to understand something, everybody. When you start a trading account, you are starting a business. Yeah, you've started a company. I know it's not registered in the on paper, but... Whenever you start a, a brokerage account, that's a company. You put money into it, I don't know, 50 grand. Yeah, you start your you start your new, you got your new little E-Trade account. Oh yeah, little shiny E-Trade account. Put 50 grand in it. Oh yeah, it's all shiny and new. <laughs> all right, that's a business. What do you mean, Shamari? What I mean is this, fuckstick. It's like anything, like a restaurant. You put 50 grand in to start the restaurant, and then the restaurant has to produce you income has to generate income above uh, liabilities, right? Is it called liabilities, right? Above the above what it costs to run it, <clears throat> and that's called your profits. Yeah, well, when you start a trading account, you're doing the same thing. Yeah, you throw 50 grand into your, your, your Charles Schwab, your, your E-Trade account. That's a business. That, your business is to make that money make more money. That's the business. <laughs> right that's what we do we make our money make us more money that's the business and if you're successful at it well you live and if you're not well back to work fucks <laughs> go punch that clock or whatever you know so you know uh like so they're stifling those who What the UK is doing here, they're saying we're going to save the consumer 
around 50 feet. What? That's if they lose it. What if they make money? All right, all right, all right, all right. I'm sorry. I, I know. I know I got angry. I got a little got a little passionate there. I know it's a... <laughs> sorry, guys. Yeah. Look, I'm not sorry, actually. No, nah, no, nah, fuck that. I'm not sorry. I want to show you the mind of a trader. That's how we look at shit. Don't come here then. Fuck off. You know? I'll go back to work. I'll go back to your fucking job. But if you come here and you lose your money, all right, well, shit. All right? I don't go betting all the horses. Or I'd actually, I'll say this. Miami, what Miami's for is the Greyhound races, right? The dog races. They got dog races here. Yeah, well, I don't go to dog races because I don't know fuck all about dog racing betting, do I? <laughs> right? All right. Same thing. And if I did go there and I lost my money, well, they're not going to give it back to me. They, they tell me, well, fucking idiot, you shouldn't have come here. If you don't know the difference between a, well, I don't know anything about dog racing. So, <laughs> so I'm just going to make this up. If you don't know anything between a, well, I know a little bit about horse racing. So let me put it this way. Let's go horse racing, you know, and say it's a rainy day. It's called, and then it makes mud. Yeah, well, if you don't know the difference between a mudder, a mudder is a dog, uh, sorry, a horse that, it runs good in the mud. If it rains outside, oh, yeah, he'll run. It's called a mudder. And, uh, you know, if you don't know about that and you voted for that, that, that one horse that can only r run when it's sunny outside, well, tough shit you lost, fucker. <laughs> That's it. All right. All right. So, okay. All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get off this. And so let me just finish this little tirade that I've been saying. <laughs> it's been a tirade. I know. I'm Look! Because it's true. If you don't know what you're doing, don't put your money out there. Don't do it. Okay? If you don't know what you're doing, don't do it. All right? And what I hate is this shit where, you know, they say that they're going to protect these consumers with $50 million worth of money. You're not protecting anything. You're stifling those of us who actually make it. Of course, there's going to be people who come and fuck off and fuck up. Yeah, well, tough shit. We'll weed them out. We can, and then we move on. All right. All right. Okay. Okay. So this is really the final. Let's let's move on. So, in addition to the ban, the FCA <laughs> has determined because and, and, and uh, why are you so angry, Shamar? You know why? When I first started trading crypto, uh, sorry, sorry, forex, fuck crypto. When we first started trading forex, I used to have four hundred to one leverage, four hundred to one, and then the housing market thing happened, and then when the uh, Dodds Frank Act, so look up Dodds Frank. That's the big law that came out after the housing crash. Yeah, it dropped us to 50 to 1 leverage. Why us? I'm a Forex trader. That was a housing crash. Why are we getting penalized? Yeah, because we got to save soccer mom and dad. You know how rich I'd be right now if I still had 401 leverage? Fuck, I wouldn't even be doing this crypto crap. Fuck. <laughs> All right. ah, thanks, Obama. Obama said hope and change. No, oh, that wasn't the change I was hoping for. 50 to 1 leverage? Yes. Thanks, brother. Yes. <laughs> All right. Okay, so that's why I'm, I, I, I'm angry because I have experienced it, you know. When politicians uh, do stuff to, you know, protect the people, well, you're, 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 you're killing the rest of us. I'd be a millionaire right now if I still had 401 leverage. Easy, easy, fucking simple. Yeah, right. That's why I got to do this crypto crap now. Get into this fucking jungle. <laughs> Wait for this one to pay off. All right, look. In addition to the ban, the FCA has determined to prohibit the distribution and marketing of any derivatives to UK consumers. So they're not fucking around. If you even advertise, if you even do any marketing, to UK consumers, Yeesh. you're going to face some trouble. So specifically, the FCA mentions the following derivatives. So these are the derivatives they're not allowed to invest in. Options, futures, contracts for difference, 
and exchange traded notes. You know, the usual, the usual, usual band of suspects right there. <laughs> so the measures applied to companies and firms operating within or outside the United Kingdom. The executive director, director of strategy and competition for the FCA, Sheldon Mills, stated, this ban reflects how seriously we view the potential harm to retail consumers in these products. Consumer protection is paramount here. Wow, I'd like to say this to you, Mr. What's this fuckstick's name? Sheldon Mills? Uh, well, I like to put it this way, fucksticks. Well, you, you fuckstick. Singular. Look, you're stifling the potential of wealth generation. You're stopping a man from generating his own wealth. Under the guise of protecting him. Well, sir, I don't take kindly of that. Yeah, you're protecting his bank account from having to hold more money when he makes money. Look, all right, so here's what this fuckstick continues to say. He says, significant price volatility. Combined price volatility. How do you think we make money? Well, if the price ain't going up and down, we can't make any money, can we? If it ain't trending up, trending down, well, there ain't no money to make, motherfucker. We need volatility. You see it? Oh, yeah. You see it. I show you guys my trades every day. So this is what this fuckstick says. Oh, I'm getting angrier as I read this. Let's hurry up. I think the fuel's kicking in. <laughs> Hold on, let's go. Before I start fucking flipping out. Significant, because they're stopping people from having the opportunity to make money. Right? You're saying, well, you could lose your money. Yeah, but I could make money, asshole. Right? If I'm the consumer, I'm soccer dad, and I'm like, hey, I want to go invest my money. And this guy says, no, 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 but you could lose it. Well, I say to him, look, asshole. Yeah, but I could make a bunch. And I'm willing to risk it. So fucking step to the side and let me get into this daggone goodie room. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I want in the goodie room. I want in the goodie room, baby. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, luck. Protection. All right, where are we at here with this fuck sticks fucking bullshit right here? What do you say? All right, let's just start with you. Uh, significant price volatility combined with the inherent difficulties of valuing crypto assets reliably, places retail consumers at a high risk of suffering losses from trading crypto derivatives. All right, let's just move on. I don't want to get too angry. We have evidence of this happening on a significant scale. The ban provides an appropriate level of protection. All right, I'm just going to move on. I'm not going to comment on that because <laughs> that'll be another 20 minutes right there. According to the FCA's announcement, these sons of bitches, the prohibitive measures will take effect from January 6th, 2021. The regulator has asked companies and firms that trade in crypto derivatives to stop their operations before this date. In the meantime, the regulator advises investors to stay alert for crypto scams. From now on, they qu they qualify all companies offering crypto derivatives products in retail to retail consumers as crypto scams. Oh, wait, they're just going on a rampage. So in a separate document, the FCA also clarified that its measures will affect firms that issue or create crypto derivatives. Firms that distribute them, brokers, the financial advisors, and the investment platforms as well as the marketing firms that reference the referred derivatives, traders, consumers, and retail consumer organizations. With regard to consumers, the FCA states, retail consumers with existing holdings can remain invested following the prohibition until they choose to de-invest. There is no time limit on this, and we do not require or expect firms to close out retail consumers' positions unless consumers ask for this. So, there's a little silver lining right there. 
In other words, if you're if you're a UK investor and you're already in an options contract, where where are they? Where are they? What do they want to do? Hold on, what are they? Uh, if you're already in an options or a futures, uh, where the fuck is this shit? Um, they're gonna let that contract stay open for you. Wait, we're hold on one second, guys. I want to show you something. Oh, there we go. All right. So if you are already in an options contract, a futures contract, a CFD, or an, an ETN, they're going to allow it to go. Like, so they're not going <clears> to, <throat> um, if you're in the in Britain, and I know there's a bunch of you guys over there in Britain that watch the show. And so uh, if you're already in any of these products, it says there's, so the retailers with existing holdings. So if you already have the holdings, bang, you're good to go. You can still hold them. You can remain. It says you can remain. Wait, wait, wait. All right, let's start this again. Existing holders can remain invested following the prohibition until you close it out and de-invest. So you guys are allowed to keep rocking and rolling, but there will be no, there will be no new, uh, there will be no new investing after the date. What was the date? Oh, there it is. So January 6, 2021, UK. That's it for you and the derivatives. All right. Uh, so that's how it goes. That's how it's going down around those parts. Um, like I said, most retail consumers don't really know about options and swaps and you know all this high tech shit like you know like I know you know like you guys don't know that shit right and so it's not a big deal in the short term but well at all sorry 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 not just the short term it's not a big deal because a retailer is more like you and I like I just buy on the spot market I buy it throw it in a ledger Hold it, right? And so warehouse it, right? Build my cryptocurrency warehouse. Yeah, strong. Bang! Big. Yes. Working product. Right? Revenue generating product. And so, you know, in terms of our money, you and I watching, you watching me in this right here, it's not going to affect our money, but you know, it just uh, sets a tone. Sets a tone. And it's the same thing, you know, and, and just as a trader myself, it gets me angry when you, you know, you know, the reason I got, the reason I live the life I do is the fact that there was a thing called the internet it came out when I was a kid. And since I just, I'm interested in money and markets and stuff, I was able to invest in something called Forex, right? Because of the internet, right? And so if I didn't, if there was no internet, or if there, if there was no Forex, yeah, I'd be a worker bee. Yeah, what else could I do, right? I, what else would I have to do? I'd have to, I mean, I have a, you know, I like, a, you know, I have my bachelor degree. And so, you know, I'd have to go shill that around town. And I mean, I'd make money and shit, but I'd just be a regular, you know, boring like that, right? And so, you know, thanks to the fact that no one stopped me from getting into this space, Forex, the Forex derivative space, yeah, I was able to carve out a life for myself. Whereas, like, what what I'm doing right now, well, yeah, it's unimaginable. Yeah, my mother and father could never do what I'm doing, right? I mean, uh, he, right? Nobody, like, of course not. I mean, are you crazy? It couldn't even occur. Uh, just sitting at home fucking trading, pressing a button and making money, right? And so, uh, you know, and, and, and so, and no one stifled me. They said, go for it, right? Sure, a lot of guys lose money in the markets, but you get to go for it. And so that's what I don't like about this is that, you know, the UK is not letting you go for it, you know? Uh Because they're afraid you're going to lose your money. Well, a lot of people lose money. 
Yeah, so just don't come here before you know what you're doing, right? And so, all right, and so, all right, all right. So what's the final word, Shamari? Well, so the final word is uh, this isn't going to affect our money in terms of, you know, uh, price. And uh, sorry for you UK folk. All right, there we go. That's the fucking final word. Sorry for you guys in the UK who actually know what you're doing and uh, your government is stifling your ability to generate your own revenue. I mean, long time before there was crypto. Yeah. There's the internet. And that allowed a man, me, and many others to generate our own revenue. Well, that's what that's what that's what the UK is fucking with. <clears throat> right? You you fucking little crypto nerds want to be your own bank? I don't want to be my own bank, but I do want to generate my own revenue. I want to have the opportunity to generate my own daggone revenue. I don't need some fucker. I don't need to bow down to some fucker and listen to his fucking bullshit and get my fucking bullshit check when I can generate my own. And that's what the UK is doing, is stopping them, stopping uh, men from, uh, you know, getting free and generating their own revenue. All right, man, that's, all right, all right, I'm about to get crazy. Let's just move on. Let's move on. All right, what we got here? <laughs> we got block. What? Block stock memes. Frontliner of STX Army. Oh, frontliner. Collecting dank block stack memes. Fighting for the user owned internet. <laughs> All right, fuck stick. All right. Bye. You fight for it, brother. Let me see you with the bag. <laughs> you fight for it. Look. Pity him. Benjamin, I should say. I'm just going to still call you Binium, man. Fuck all this. I'm not changing the name. Binium, love you, brother. the bang. Fuck that. You know who you are. Fuck this. And we all know who you are. But fuck all that. FCA finalizes ban of crypto derivatives to retail consumers in the UK. Uh, I know, Binium. That's what we just, that's what I just finished fucking railing about. I know, Binium. I know, brother. I know. All right. All in the name of protecting soccer mom and dad. Well, uh, let me tell you something. There is a way around that, of course. You could always just register a company and you have your company do your trades for you. Oh, yeah. All right. It's still you, but you just do it under a corporate name rather than your own name. It'll work around. But still, you shouldn't have to work around it. But, I mean, there are workarounds. Don't worry about that. So, I know. Binium. Bye. Binium. CB News. What, Binium? Crypto Singapore dollar aims to diversify landscape dominated by the U.S. dollar. <laughs> All right. Well, good for it, Singapore. Go for it. <laughs> Little tiny company. Country. Have at it. Bye. <clears throat> That's never going to. Uh, whatever. The D-Pact. Look, look. Karen, what's her name? Karen something. Yes. Bang. Love you, girl. See you, girl. Bang. Yes. Lorna's friend. Actually, she was here first. Then she showed Lorna. Yes. I'll give you the proper, the proper respect you deserve. <laughs> yeah. They're all the, those two girls are from Detroit. Yes. All right. Here, drop by 007. Son of a bitch. Bye. 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 Bon, got you wrong, Cash. Got you. Once again. <laughs> Life of the Sea Brother. Node Master. Bang. Node Savior. What we got here? What we got? Oh, yeah. Lorna. Lorna Downs. Look, look. The big old Dagon. The big old portfolio. Love you, girl. See you, girl. Bang. Miguel G. Built this. Account just to follow me. Bye. Let me see, brother. Bye. Bitcoin gone. Wow. <laughs> yes. Let me see, brother. Bye. Oh, Lee, I'm already fueled. Shit. It's only 6.13. The game doesn't start for a few more hours. Fuck. I'm going to be fucked up tonight. Papa Doc. 
That's how you got to do it sometimes. Love with the though. Bye. What's Kong doing? He's bringing us a little bit, little bit of piggy wiggy. Look, look, little bit of piggy wiggy. Look, look, chain link on board Ren. Boom. Google Cloud joins EOS. Boom. Unfortunately, the UK banned the crypto, but boom, your account's still going to go like that. When you get the right products, boom. When you buy the right crypto that's generating revenue, it'll be like, boom. Hell yeah, brothers. That's how it's going down around these parts. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. How we got a new follower. We got here. Pump gods. Pump it up. All right. Bye. We got here. Profitable day traders team. Learn and grow your account balance. All right, brother. Look, come learn how to trade some Forex. I'll teach you how to real make some real money. Bye. <laughs> not those guessing, not that guessing money you're making out of crypto. Look, look, crypto. Oh, crypt, crypt throw, crypt throw away. Wow, if you want to throw away some crypto over here, bye. Just tell me what you want to throw away, and I'll set up an address, and you can throw it away right over here to me. Bye. Especially if you're throwing away some of that V chain. Look, look, I'll take it. <laughs> Love about the team in the bank. Ah, there's the miscreants. There's everybody. Look, look, brawlies. Yeah. Love you, lady. See you, lady. Bang. Sloppy. Love, brother. See you, brother. Look, look. Hold down the Canadian contingent. Bang. Oh, yeah. Stallion. Sweetie. Oh, yeah. Sweetie. Can't wait for the new book, sweetie. Look. Sweetie. Love you, sweetie. See you, sweetie. Bang. All right, let's do a little Forex. Do a little Forex. So, as you can see, the Australian dollar and the New Zealand... Well, hold on. Let me calm down here so you can see it. So, the Australian dollar and the New Zealand dollar tanked last night. Well, sorry, sorry, sorry. Not last night. Uh, today, um, after the bullshit that I showed you before, right? Um about uh, Trump, uh, like Trump's not giving the money to the, the worker bees until after the election, he says. And so, um, yeah, well, we need worker bees to have money so they can buy shit or else we don't have an economy, right? Americans got to buy stuff, right? Or else they're just going to be getting evicted and fucking, yeah, it's, it's not going to work. And so as you can see, wham, wham. Wham and wham. Uh, Trump's a fucking idiot. <laughs> he uh, He's fucking up the economy by making these statements and by doing shit like this. You know, all these workers that are out of work because of the corona thing, you know, he's fucking it up. He's. We all know they need the money. They need the fucking money. Right now, uh, millions of... of Oh, and, and here in America, we have, uh, you know, well, in where you live, too, obviously. But, you know, people who rent places, well, they, they don't have the money to pay the rent. And these landlords are evicting them a lot right now uh, because they don't they didn't get more checks. And so that's a strain on our economy. Obviously, when you're getting evicted, well, you don't go out and buy the new car. You don't go out and buy the new Whatever the fuck it is you buy, right? And so, yeah, he fucked it up big time today by saying that. And, uh, well, like I said, you know, and that's why I try to teach you guys, you know, while well, try to promote to you guys to be a Forex trader, yeah, it doesn't matter to me. I don't give a fuck. You can fuck up this economy all you want. I'm still going to make money, <laughs> right? And that's the beauty of when you're in the markets. When, you, when your money makes you money, well, we make money off of disasters, too. Right, I showed you. How did I make my money when I first started? Yeah, the housing crash. That's when I made my first bang, twenty three thousand dollars in one day. Right? Huh. And look at all the money I made earlier this this year when I was showing you my trades in March and April when we when we were doing this shit. Hold on, let me even open up some charts just to show you, just to remind you, fuck sticks. Right? Remember this? Wham! <laughs> Remember all that money we made? And then look, look, we made all that money up there. So it doesn't matter to us. It doesn't matter to me whether you you vote for this guy or not, whether your economy goes up or not. 
And that's why I want you to always remember. And that's why I've been talking about a little bit. You're going to make millions off of this crypto crap. Yeah, but it's keeping the money and making it make you more money. All right, all right. So that's enough. That's enough preaching for today. Bye. All right, let's get back to crypto. Oh, and so I wasn't in any trades. I guess I should probably say that. I'm not in any trades. I'm not trading this week, probably. Uh, um, it's just too crazy right now. It's, too, it's, it's just too crazy. <clears throat> Unless something is so obvious, yeah, I'm not going to do that. All right, sweetie. Love you, sweetie. See you, sweetie. Bye. Look, Edwin Koval. Yes. Deep in the heart of the jungle. <laughs> Yes. The belly of the beast. That's our man right in the belly of the beast. We have him deployed. Oh, yeah. That's our, like a, like a 007 deployed. Love for the sheep of the pie. Radster. Hold down the European insurgency in, in, in Prague. Love for the sheep of the pie. Oh, yeah. The insurgency. Look, look, Sunny Beep. Spy lady. Love you, lady. See you, lady. Bye. Mr. Percy, let me see brother. Bye. Here, Ben Damon. So, brother. <laughs> let me see brother. Bye. All right. Whoa, why's that all blue? What happened? What's going on here? Hold on. Okay, there we go. No, sweetie, what'd she say? When Shamari talks about his Forex Wild West days experience. Makes me optimistic about my Forex journey. Unregistered Forex Mafias. <laughs> yeah, that's how it used to be. Fuck. Fuck. Used to be fucking, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just a bunch of unregulated, unlicensed crackhead shit. And that's why when I tell you guys, Bitmex, Bitrex, all that, that's a bunch of crackhead shit. That's not going to be here anymore once the shit matures. That's how it was in the Forex market at the beginning. Right, uh, the uh, an average person couldn't trade the forex market before. Obviously, right? You had to be some super rich guy through a broker and all this. Yeah, well, the internet evens the playing field, doesn't it? As long as you're willing to learn and be diligent about your trades, just like I am. Well, I kick asses of all these fucking two thousand dollar suit wearing motherfuckers. Look, I'm in a hundred dollar shirt. They're in a two thousand dollar suit, and I kick their asses. Daily. And that's what uh, the beauty of the uh, internet did. It allowed us uh, to be free, in a way. Uh, financially free. And, uh, yeah, you know, so, yeah, sweetie. <laughs> she likes the stories. What else? I'll, I'll tell you another story then. All right. You like Wild West story days? Well, back in those days, they used to do what's called stop hunting. <clears throat> and so what brokers do is brokers, they know where the traders are trading, right? And they can see that, okay, everyone is about to short, let's say, I don't know, GBV, JPY. I know you love the GBV, JPY, sweetie. So they're going to short the GBV, JPY, but they have all their stops right here. So what these exchanges used to do was they would lie and go boop and make the price stop everybody out. Yeah. That's yeah, just to lose your money and take it from you because they're trading against you, right? It's called the trading desk. And uh, yeah, it's called stop hunting. Google the words stop hunting. That doesn't happen anymore, but yeah, back in the days, they used to what's called stop hunting. So they would see, they can see, you know, they're the, they're the, those guys are the computer platform, they, so they can see where everyone's stops are at. So they would just hunt them boop, by making the price boop, stop them out. Yeah, yeah. Shady shit. Shady, shady, shady. All right, let's move on. Because those days are over, so we don't need to dwell on that kind of sad shit like that. All right, then there's just Benjamin and Benjamin. And, all right, let's move on. Bang, look, look, bang, look, look, yeah, welcome back, welcome back to the command center, the Death Star, look, all right, so we had a great show for you today, what else is new, of course we did, it's great as the multiverse fucks dick, look, so, chain link, <laughs> multiverse, 
Love it. It's never going to get old. Chainlink onboards Ren to secure DeFi. So, um, they are, uh, they're using Chainlink, but it's not the usual shit that we see Chainlink doing, which is that price reference data. It's, um, what's the name of this thing called? Hold on, hold on one second. Proof of Reserve, right? They have a new product. Chainlink has come out with a new product called Proof of Reserve. And well, bang. It's being used. Uh, it's being it's generating revenue. And so, well, that's what being a company is all about, is coming out with products and generating revenue from said products. And so, Chainlink is doing it. You know, the usual. But, all right. And then Google Cloud joins the EOS community. And so, ow. Whoops. Um, that's amazing. That's amazing. Uh, it's not EOS going on the cloud. It's the cloud coming to EOS. And so, uh, like I said, I view that as a, I, I would describe that as an onboarding for NEOs, right? I think that's fair to say. And, um, <laughs> well, uh, that's going to bring a lot of, a lot of action, a lot of, uh, business to the EOS blockchain there. So, uh, good stuff. And then finally, The UK bans crypto derivatives for retail, retail consumers. So the institutions we're waiting for, oh, they're still good to go. Well, they're still good to go. And that's what we're really waiting for. But why I got so angry right there is just because, you know, if it wasn't for the internet and these brokerages, you know, I'd have a whole different life. You know, uh, had be some worker be with a wife and kids doing uh you know my i uh, i have a degree in management in the not-for-profit sector and it's uh one of the only two programs in north america that offers it so i'm that degree is very highly actually you know acclaimed you know that degree that i have and you know i would have i would have just been a, a worker bee you know like not that there's anything wrong with that not that there's anything wrong with that but just uh, I like an adventurous life, you know, I'm a, I'm an adventurous guy. And so I got to live that life, travel the world, live in Germany, all this stuff, live all around the world, different cities all the time, because my money's on my laptop, this laptop I'm talking to you right here on, well, not this one, but you know, it makes me, well, this one does make me money, but the, in, in, in terms of, I've been investing for 20 years. And so obviously I've upgraded laptops. And so what I'm trying to say to you is with a laptop, and my debit card, I'm a free man, right? And so, uh, you know, my sister, you know, in my, okay. All right, so I want you to buy a book called Rich Dad, Poor Dad by uh, an author named Robert Kiyosaki, okay? And that teaches you about financial freedom and how rich people think about money. And so, you know, that's what happened to me. I got lucky. My mother worked at TD Bank at the data center, so I learned all about banking and shit when I was 10 years old and stuff like that. And, uh, but thanks to the internet, I was able to take my money in my own hands. Like, I mean, that's what you crypto people talk about, right? Uh, be your own bank, be your own bank. Well, I'm not going that extreme, fuckstick. But I do want to be my own investor. I do want to be my own investor, and and my sister, my sister, she came out with a product um, right now in America, in the Michigan, there's a state called Michigan here in America, and they use her product to teach kids how to invest in the stock market. She taught kids how to, uh, well, invest in the stock market is what it's about, and so, you know, that's what we should have is financial education, what I believe is what I'm a proponent of. What I would love to fight for, if someone would actually come out here and say it, I'd go and I'd sign up and I'd fight with you for it, is to teach the average person financial education. 
read the book Robert Kiyosaki and you'll see what I'm uh, the, the the book Rich Dad Poor Dad and you'll see what I mean. Basic financial education, right? It makes you free. It makes you free, and that's what you know. Our the education system we have built right now is built to educate you just enough so that you get to work for someone. Yeah, some other guy that's free, who's smart and shit, right? It doesn't teach you to take your money to make money. You know, that's what the trick is in life, right? Like, my money makes me money. That's how I live. I live by my money making me money. Anyone can do it. <laughs> it's not rocket science. Anyone. Anyone. But that's not how the system is set up. They don't want you. Look, look, look. You guys know I'm not some conspiracy weirdo or something like this. All right? But let's get real. The powers that be. If you just taught everyone, hey, man, you could just, you know, you could make a bunch of money just trading the Australian dollar against the yen. Yeah, well, who the fuck would go to work? You'd become an expert at it, right? You'd learn how to trend trade like a motherfucker. Fuck that job. Right? So they're not teaching everybody. They're not teaching everybody. And, uh, you know, I think that's horrible. I think it's a... You know, I mean, you have you have problems of unemployment. Well, if you had taught everybody how to trade back in high school, well, even if they're unemployed, they'd just take their money and they could at least make a living while they're waiting for... You wouldn't need unemployment checks anymore because they would just, all right, fuck this. I'll just make a living or something. You know? All right, all right. So, you know, so the UK has banned crypto derivatives for retail consumers. I think that's horrible. You should give the retail consumer every avenue to live the life that they want. And if they make a choice and it, it's wrong, well, that's it. That's wrong. Oh, fuck, fuck. But don't, you're stifling the rest of us. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You're stifling the rest of people. That would actually be successful at this. That would no longer have to bow down to some fucking... Corporation every morning at 9 a.m. Right? And so, uh... You know, so uh, I hate it. I hate it. And so I hate when I hear stories like this. Um, you should allow your people to live to the full potential of their, you know, their potential. You know, you live to your potential. So financially, intellectually, all of it. All right. So, fuck, that was a, I feel passionate about that. that I, honestly, if it was not for the Internet. I would be a worker bee. <laughs> yeah, and if it wasn't for, you know, just that I know about markets and, like I said, my mother was a bankster back in 2000. Well, sorry, not 2000. Uh, back when I was a kid. And that's how I got into it and all that. And so, before she became a teacher and to do women's work. Uh, anyway, we'll get. That's a whole other thing. But anyway, so, you know. I don't like that, and so, all right, man, let's fucking end this fucking, let's chill it and kill it. I I like to leave this, I like to leave the show on a good note, though, so, but, well, I guess the good note is, oh, fuck, but look, look, the good note is this, brothers and sisters, all right, they might be cutting off the retailers, soccer mom and dad, but, bye. The institution investors are still on the way. The tsunami is still on the way. Here it comes. So look, let's chill it and kill it. Let's get you back to your wives and lives. Subscribe below. Press the bell. You get an automatic notification when I do the show. The greatest show on earth. The greatest show. <laughs> in the multiverse. My name is Shamar Clark. Love talking money. Bang. Love talking crypto. Bang. Favorite time of my day. So look, thanks for having me in your home. And I will see you tomorrow for another fun fact filled day of crypto, crypto, crypto. So until then, subscribe here. Boom. Watch that video here. 
Bang. I'll see you tomorrow. My name is Shamar Clark, and I'm always on duty. Bye. Yeah. Over and out.